it's Hillary with Lazy Lime Alive. Welcome. Today, we're going to be making a rib necklace. What's that? A rib necklace? Never heard of it? Well, I decided, trying to figure out what it was called, um, that it kind of is like a bar necklace, which if you've seen those ones at like anthropology and stuff, it's just like a little thin metal bar suspended on a chain. It's gold or silver. Some of them are even copper. Um, but there is also an older style of necklace, which you may not be familiar with, which was called a bib necklace, which um, basically looked like a little crescent uh, suspended on two chains like the bar. So, uh, since I have a little bit of a curve in my necklace here, as you can see, I decided it's called a rib. So, and it's super, super easy to make. Let's go. For this project, you will need some metallic soft flex wire. Um, you can use the regular non-metallic one, but I got the gold that sort of matches the color that I'm working with. Um, this one is medium. I prefer to work with the light, but um, this is what they had. So I got this one. Um, I use closed jump rings for my closure. Um, you can also use a split ring if you prefer, or that's what you have. Um, I used three spacer beads on either side of my necklace. and. Um, they said, you, you don't have to, to do these if you uh, want to do one without spacer beads or without um, pearls. Um, also, some crimps, crimp beads. Uh, I use small split rings to attach um, our little beaded piece to our chain, so you'll need those. I also used um, pearls. <laughs> I used these little brown pearls. I think they have a nice iridescent quality to them. What these are, they're technically Baroque pearls or I don't know. They're just sort of these little misshapen mutant pearls and I kind of like them. I use that as the centerpiece. Um, you'll also need an assortment of tools. So I used wire cutters. Um, everybody always laughs at my wire cutters because they're gigantic, but you know, they get the job done. I got them at Home Depot and they also work on memory wire, so I don't have to have two pair. And I've never sharpened them in, I don't even know how many years I've had them. You can use sharp scissors, but in cutting the soft flex, I found that the scissors kind of give me a frayed edge that I don't want. Um, I used a crimper. And I used um, my little bent nose pliers here to kind of pull things through. And I also used my little nippers here. You also need a ruler. And then this is the finished necklace, but um, you need an appropriate length of chain that suits the length of the necklace that you want to make. Um, my necklace is about 16 and a half inches long. So um, I have about I think the, the length of chain is about seven um, inches each, so I have about 14 inches of chain. Oh, sorry. You'll also need, um, what are these called? Wire guards, U-shaped, horseshoe-shaped um, wire guards. You'll also need two of those. As you can see, we have our split ring here is our wire guard right there. It's a little horse-shaped looking thing. And then here is our crimp bead. And then our spacers, followed by three of the brown pearls, the Baroque pearl, brown, spacer, crimp, the horseshoe wire cover, and then the split ring. The wire cover keeps the wire from being abraded and worn down and breaking in your necklace. If you can see these little pieces, they're almost impossible for me to get onto film so you can see what's going on, but me and my incredible artistic ability are about to show you how it's done. So, first, 
we take our saw flex wire, we go through the crimp bead, out the end, and through the hole in the wire guard, back down, through this other hole here, and through the crimp. Okay, and then you're going to hold it tightly and crimp it. Okay, so you have your wire, you put your crimp bead on. Now we're going to feed one uh, end of the wire through one hole of the wire guard, and then back through the other end of the wire guard and through the crimp. Now we're ready to crimp. The crimper has three different or three separate little slots and you have to use them in succession starting from the outer end first then the second little notch and then finally the third notch um, this what it actually does is it um, flattens your crimp then bends the edges together and then rounds the edges so there's no sharp edges um, I'm not the best at it, but I get it done. Add the three spacer beads, followed by three of the brown pearls, then the single, I don't know, call it a statement, statement pearl, um, followed by the three brown pearls, and then three spacer beads. So you finished stringing your beads, and now it's time to put the wire guard and the crimp bead on uh, so that we can hook this onto our necklace. So uh, <clears throat> the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put your crimp bead on. After your crimp bead, you're gonna put the first leg of your wire guard, then run your wire through the second part of your wire guard, then back through the crimp bead. After taking your wire through the crimp, through the wire guard, through the other end of the wire guard, and back through the, the crimp, pull it through the spacer beads or the beads that you're using. Remember to crimp your crimp beads closed um, on just like we did on the, on the first end and um, it should be taut but not tight. Ta-da! Now we're ready to attach our chain. So um, I took my chain and I just kind of laid it out so I could get an idea of how it's gonna look and I'm pleased with that. Looks like a necklace and um, once I was satisfied with that, because I just wanted to make sure I was going to have enough chain, um, because otherwise I was going to have to add a lot of uh, rings at the end. But I just folded it in half and um, clipped the end with um, my little nippers. And basically I just took off a, um, a link. I used split rings to attach my chain to my brib, and um, it was a little problematic for me, but I, I got it. And um, if your wire guard is wide enough, you could put the split rings on the wire guard before you um, feed it through the second hole and through the, second, through the crimp a second time. Um, Mine didn't work that way because my split rings were too fat. So however you do it, feed your split ring and your link through um, either end of your little brib and um, then you're ready to attach the closure. I'm attaching the closed ring to one end with a split ring, but you can also use a um, sp split ring, like a large split ring, um, to one end of my chain link. And on the other end, I'm using a split ring 
to attach my clasp, which I forgot to say that you needed in the beginning. So add one clasp. So my new necklace hangs exactly where I wanted it to. It's about 16 and a half, 16 and a quarter inches long, um, which I thought was appropriate for my neck. So you just uh, work on what you want for yourself. Uh, I didn't want it to be a choker because I don't know, this is the wrong kind of sales pitch because choke, there's nothing good about that. So um, it, generally this would take me probably um, maybe about 20 minutes to get everything exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, I hope you make your own necklace and I would like to see you again. Come back, Lazy Line of Life. It's awesome. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below, below. And you wanna look below because I'll have the link to all the materials that I've used. So thank you and have a good day. Bye.